The, 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 the dream is real. It's your lifestyle specialist, Kenny Burns, reporting live from the safest place on earth. Ladies and gentlemen, I call it Love Land. I welcome you to experience it at some point in your life. The dream is real. The, 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 the dream is real. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, I am excited today because uh, I have a hell of a topic. You know, yesterday I was leaving Detroit. What up, though? To everybody in Detroit, they were uh, an excellent host for me this weekend as I hosted. The Grand Prix. That's right. They have a Grand Prix out there in Detroit. It's a big shout out to Dennis Archer Jr., uh, to Penske. Um, it was a hell of a time. Oh, yeah. Big shout out to the staff at Ignition Media. I had a time and I put on that red suit, ladies and gentlemen. That's right. Mick Boogie said I look like Suge Knight. Welcome to Death Row Records. If you don't want your executive producer all up in the video, come to Death Row. <laughs> I don't know, that's, that's how my suit made me feel. But without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to start putting your hands together for my illustrious panel of superstars. I missed them. It's been two weeks. Let's start with the beautiful queen. She's on her way to Paris to meet Coco and get in some goddamn trouble. Yeah, Latia Ashley. What's up, baby? Hello. Hi, yeah, guys. Oh, so we miss you. Oh, your people. hair looks amazing, baby. I don't know what them curls twist off, baby, what you did there. <laughs> Round of applause for the twist. The yeah, they are beautiful. You are beautiful. Ladies and gentlemen, keep those round of applause going for my brother from another mother who's starting his own podcast soon. Ladies and gentlemen, Natural Boss himself, Hasa Diddy. I'm on fire today. Beer, hey, beer, 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 beer. Yeah, good to see you, champion. Uh, let's keep those round of applause going because the scammers will be caught and scammed. Okay, that's right. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to keep those round of applause going for my sister from another mister. Shelly B from DC. Michelle Burns, how are you? I am absolutely wonderful. And yes, we are taking down the scam. Yeah, we're going to do this for the one time. That's it. That's it. Cousin Tony, I'm only doing it for that one. Uh, Tasha one Tony, that's it. And, and Mama Gail, I love you. And big shout out to my mother in law. <laughs> I just want to shout my mother in law, Gail, and Frank, my in laws. They took us to dinner. You know what I'm talking about? We had a time in Detroit. So what up, though, again, to all of my people? A window in Paris, it was good to see. Moved to Atlanta ASAP. Uh, okay, um, as I was going to the airport uh, on Sunday, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you saw my, my Sunday offering, right? My Soul Food Sunday. Did y'all see my, my Soul Food Sunday? Because we're tired of the words. We need action. And I've been seeing some things on social media the last couple of weeks, and we have some very intelligent conversations about these topics. But I want to let the savant... The healer, Ayanla Van Zant, start this conversation off. Tiffany, can you play that clip for the nation? The one thing we forget is that the better we are as women, the better men can be as men. The softer we are as women, the stronger they get to be as men. And when we are their soft place to fall, they stand with a, a different height and a different posture and a different elevation. One of the challenges that we're facing right now is that women want men to be their girlfriends and men come home to find another dude. Oh. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this episode is called Masculinity versus femininity um the queen just said a word you know and, and i want to set the table because i know my my illustrious panel of superheroes got something to say you know and and i can't wait to hear but i just that touched my spirit you know we've talked several times on this platform right here on the kenny burns show about it i'm gonna start with you uh latia ashley burns can you please just share how you feel about the goats Words. Well, obviously, we see how you feel about it. She's the queen and the goat, and that she is. Mm. Um, I don't, I don't disagree with that. I think that women's um, femininity ushers in the masculinity. Usually, whenever a woman mm. feels that a man isn't standing up in his masculinity, there has to be a balance. So she compensates for his masculinity, and then she's the one that's carrying the weight, so to speak. But yeah, so as long as a man is a resting place for a woman to rest in that, mm. I don't think a woman that understands the infrastructure of a home and relationship would, you know, mind resting in her femininity around the man. I see a man so, okay. in your immediate future. Lord have mercy. We got, I just, I don't know. Your skin is glowing. You might want to share something. I don't know what it is, but you look. Hello. All right. Uh, Hasa, did, how do you feel about that statement? That was a, that was a bar. I want to start with the fact that this conversation is, uh, major right now poignant and we have 
So we have so many unqualified uh, leaders of this conversation. Not in regard to Ayama. Ayama is a goat, somebody we should listen to. And her point was on point. I've experienced it, so <laughs> right. I can't. I, well, I've, I haven't. I haven't experienced the part of coming home to the other men, but I've experienced being with women and them loving your masculinity in the courting phase and on the external, and then getting in the relationship and then trying to bridle you mm. to the point where it's like, nah, like I'm the man that you met, like you know, like I if I if I am anything less then you won't respect me to say. Ladies, <laughs> oh, that was, you be talking about like, <sighs> sorry, finish brother, that, that, <laughs> I, I just want that people so to heavy. no hold on I'm sorry I got to talk I did, because you you all grow and I think that's part of the thing Hoss you know like you, you all grow so you re-enter the relationship several different times but ladies and Absolutely. gentlemen the core of the person is the core of the person I think so you might get versions hopefully growth versions of that absolutely right you know what I mean but I just feel like whoa like you want me to be your latest crush you want me to be the latest thing you admire on TV from a sermon or at church and you, you, you want me to add these things that are not a part of my 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 being? You you fell in love with the, this person? How how can you not you know what I mean? I mean, let's let's actually speak to the fact that part of masculine features or traits is the is individuality, is mm -hmm. the ability to influence others and in, via leadership. Right. And the second odd, uh, like you, there's a, there's a trust that has to go into that. You have to trust the character. You have to trust the confidence. You have to trust the content of that character. Mm. And if I, if I, if something else or some, some situation, emotion, anything can influence that, then you can't trust that in, in chaos. And oftentimes we wow. create our own chaos. Wow. Well, I see Shelly B's, uh, her eyebrows wiggling. <laughs> It's doing the wiggle. <laughs> My eyebrows are wiggling because <laughs> we look at this man versus woman, this masculinity versus femininity. And I I look at it as now in 2023, it's another layer of culture. Mm. Everything we talk about is another layer of culture. Culture, culture what do you mean by that though? Expound. Because in some cultures, the woman is the person that is at Got home. Got it. Got it. They are taking care of the house. They Got are it. taking care of the children, um, whatever that may look like. Whatever uh, that traditional man, role looks like. Whatever that traditional role looks like. Um, the man is the worker. He yeah. is the one that goes out to bring uh, sustenance home so that the home can be taken care of by said uh, woman. Got it. Um, and, and, and it's... And then you have this independent woman. You have this independent man. Oh, I'm I'm good. I'll just wait until. And it, it just they all folds into each other. I don't mm. think there is a right or a wrong answer for verse you know man versus woman, um, role against role. Um, I just think it's really just because of the culture and how you grew up. You know, you know, I, I like that. I like that. And you were going to say something, Hans? To me, I think it speaks to foundation, right? Like culture is built off of energy. Culture is built off of custom. Culture is built Facts. off of uh, what works, right? And I think like even when you highlight those other cultures where these roles may be what we have now uh, created nomenclature to say traditional, um, you would I would look at the utility. I would look at the comparative result to the mm. outcome, right? Um, because even though we could say there's oppression present in yeah. those relationships and to some degree, um, the same is true in all cases. Would you rather be have a nuclear family in control of your own oppression mm. or would you rather be oppressed by something you can't control that's much larger than you? Mm. Um, and that that's like my key point right there. Then I proceed to economics and financial. Right. The other things that come, yeah, that come with relationships. Yeah, like yeah. things like that. Um, so, yeah. Um, and the point that I even wanted to further and tack on to my last point is that uh, that individuality that a man has to create um, and or influence that he has to have um, has to is only as good as anything that goes under it. 
right? Mm. Like if or goes I'm, beside I'm it. not a protector. No, because I can't protect you beside you. If mm. they, you feel what I'm saying? I can't. Hey, I need you behind me. Like, which means I have to take a leading position. I can't. Uh, I can't uh, lead you from with with the, with equal knowledge. Right. I, I would have to lead you with you know superior logic. I would have to. Um, and, and 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 I'm not saying that. See, see, I like the way you furrow in your eyebrows, sis, because she's a furrow in them. Like uh, that, I, I'm not saying that. She's gonna cut you. That's what she's gonna do. That's right, she, right, right, she right. right. You, I'm, I'm gonna cut that. you, and your, your dreads are gone by the time you wake up. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, the way you use the word unity and nuclear in a sentence, and it it just baffles me that your intelligence sometimes. But I, I want to say this to to that point, and the reason I say it side by side is because the one thing I'm learning in 24 years of marriage this October is there is no leading with someone behind. It is not, it's not possible. And I say that because you both bring things to the table that are equal in value. And if you don't see them as equal in value the entire time, they'll be in balance. Now I do wanna say this though, and I think that's a not being in a relationship thing because you're super intelligent and ladies, he's single, I think this week. Are you single? Okay, great. But. <laughs> He's, you know what I mean? But he's learning and he's 29. Are you 28 or nine? How old are you? I'm 28 forever, just yeah. forever. Okay, I'm well 28. he's lying about his age, but he looks young, he has great skin. But the point I'm trying to make is, at the end of the day, you know, and I'm coming to you, Latia, because I saw you, you picked, I don't know, was that a taser, a laser? It was something that was gonna- It was a fan. It was, oh, you, she was gonna hit you with a fan. Okay, but the thing I'm trying to get across is that when you, are looking at the table and how unbalanced it is in relationships, I think it's because you don't set those initial boundaries and requirements for each party involved. There's no, you're gonna do this, I'm gonna do this, we're gonna grow like this. Because to Hasidini's point, when you look at the playing field, if you have the mentality, I'm gonna lead and they're gonna follow, that's natural order. I got a one word answer for this. What is it? Capacity. But see, the, what I've learned about capacity, you, you're very intelligent. I love these words. We're going to add that to unity and nuclear. Um, but capacity is theory in a relationship because you have no choice when you have mortgages. You have no choice when you have kids. There's certain things you can't because guess what? It's going to have to be divided and conquered. It's going to have. I'm, so I'm not asking. I'm telling. You know what I mean? Because, so heavy. because at the end of the day, I think that when you think about relationships and when you think about masculinity versus femininity, to Shelly's point, you think ideally of traditional roles that people play. But I have a question, and we're going to start with Latia because I'm sure she has a motherfucking answer. Uh, how's that going for the women that are taking on traditional male roles? Well, I think it, it, I don't think we're a monolith in relationship. It depends on the relationship. If she's taking it on, typically most women don't want to. Mm. So if they're doing it, it's because they have to for survival sake mm. or, or to keep the order and the motion going. The only, you're only as strong as the weakest link. Come on. So if you're connected to the person, let's say you married wrong or you had kids with somebody who you probably wouldn't have if you had better sense. Mm. Then you have to take on that. And most people are still together in relationships and marriages, which in my you know, knowledge, some people are still together for the sake of the family. And this, this man isn't doing quote unquote, what's the man role. So they have to do all things. Mm. So how's it working out? I'm sure a woman's, I mean, her, her back is probably tired. I'm sure mm. nobody wants to be all things. Yeah, Women, we want to rest so that we can cater to you because from my experience, it's very simple to please a man. You understand? Hold but on, hold on. You can't, you can't, you that, can't you know that. that you know that. That you know that. Hello? Yeah, it's the men men I think men are very um simple and women we, we make it complex. We care more about stuff that we think that men care about and when they tell us we don't care we don't care about that. We're like, Yes you do because you know, you like this on Instagram. That don't mean he liked this in real life. You know what I'm saying? It looks good for wow. the moment or for the night, but not good for my life. No, say that again. What I'm learning is that men like certain things for certain things. Mm. And what they like for the night doesn't mean they like it for their life. Mm. And I think women are getting caught up in that and, and trying to catch up with, with what they like for the moment, thinking that that's a lifetime thing. And they're, they're dying behind that. Mm. You know what I mean? Hold um, on. 
what they like for tonight is not necessarily Doesn't what they, they like, like for their life. For their life. I mean, round of applause. This is now. now I, I just want to jump in here, Latia, because you, you dropped. But but that's and it also, fellas, does not mean that it's okay in some of the actions that we make or some of the things that we do to that point, right? And it is so true. Jessica was just telling me, she said, boy, your 50th birthday is going on 10 months. And I'm like, what you talking about? She said, you keep buying shit, talking about you getting for getting it for your birthday. And she said, quite simply, <laughs> you ain't gonna want this shit after you get it. <laughs> and, and like, literally, I'm like, damn, like, I mean, outside of my watch game, you know what I'm saying? I think you're right. Outside, outside of my watches, you might be right. Because I'm just listen, not she said tripping. something that's powerful. You ain't gonna want it after you get it. Ooh, hold on, don't try to You ain't gonna want it out, out, after, after you get it. And I'm not being a pick me. Mm. Somebody might listen to this and say, oh, she's being a pick me, pick me. I have no problem being picked, yeah. believe me. Yeah. I am that chick, I don't have a problem with that. So. There's to me, there's no such thing as masculinity versus because versus that we against. We're not against. It's unity. We're yeah, one with no, community. No, We're but building. but but hold on. I, I I agree and disagree with that particular statement. I think it is a versus because I think there are roles that we all play that are better served in some aspects by women and men. There's no way. For sure. Now, I'm not saying a man can't love like a woman, but I don't see how because they don't have the maternal capacity. I'm using one of my brother's words, capacity, you know what I'm talking about? To really do the things that are necessary. We are not that selfless. I'm saying the DNA of a man. Now, you might find some special gems like myself and others that are willing to put other everybody before them, right? But at the same time, that's just like not natural for most human beings. And I'm not saying, I mean, we're, we're saying this for sake of a great title for the show, Latia. We're not saying like, yeah, of course, this of course, is absolute, course. right? But I think that, and Shelly, I'm coming to you and then House, I want you to clean it up. But like, I feel what you said wholeheartedly, Latia, because you know what your man needs. You choose. Men need respect. No. Women need love. Man, you just want to shoot. You shoot people in the Women face. Women need love her because you show she men you love him by the way you respect him. Oh, it's hard for a woman to show respect to a man that she don't love yes. unless she fears him. Yes, and and you know and, to, and hold on. And to Haas's point, you can't meet a man the way that he is and not expect him to feel that way later down the line. Just because y'all have grown, things have changed, and he has spoken life into you, helped you fulfill your dreams as much as you helped him fulfill his. All these things, but at the end of the day, that respect. So if he feels a way about it, he feels a way about it. We talked about this several episodes ago. You can't tell your children they don't feel the way they feel. You don't have the complexity of growing up in a social and digital age like that. You don't even understand the impressions that are made upon them daily because you're not them. And we could never because we look at that. We look down on that shit. And we do. We look down and like, y'all got to be kidding me. You could go Google whatever answer you want right now. You could go get the information you want right now. So we're laughing. But it's true. And to Latia's point, like love, women want to feel love and protected. Again, I say this famous quote my wife told me at the beginning of our marriage. They all will fall in love with what I fell in love with. Don't bring that shit to my house. There's a level of love there, ultimately, but respect too. And I had to fucking dance the line my entire career because I'm selling fantasy for a living. So people hear things and think that there's certain things or they go through these experiences and think this is a certain way. So it's okay to talk about these things, y'all. It's okay to say, I want to be feminine or I want to be masculine or I'm both or whatever the case may be because we are not supposed to be one thing. Right? Are we are we as human beings supposed to be one thing? But there is a stronger quality that women possess in the femininity category. There is a stronger thing that men possess in the masculinity category. So Shelly, come on in and say today. I don't know if it's saving the day uh, as a single woman out here in these uh, streets yeah. in the District of Columbia. The one thing that I we haven't, I don't know if we've if talked about it just yet, but distinguishing the, the difference between a healthy and unhealthy femininity versus masculinity. Right. If you're not healthy within yourself and mm. you're coming to the table, then you're going to run into these problems. Come on, sister dear. Shit me. Huh? Don't lie <laughs> I mean, to yourself. That's, that's just that's just the, the, the you know, the simple answer of, of a lot of this. Uh, someone said to me, matter of fact, last week, um, I need to stop treating you 
like one of the one of the dudes. Words. Yeah. One, one of, of the dudes. One of the niggas. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I realized that in some <laughs> instances I am treated like a nigga. Yeah. And I shouldn't be. Yeah. You know, it, it's don't forget I am Michelle, <laughs> not Michael. Mm-hmm. And, and understand that I do have feelings, and yeah, I know I have to protect myself and that's sometimes that's where that comes from being a single female i i am my protector yeah right now i don't have somebody that is i mean i do have people that are looking out for me but yeah. understand that when i walk outside that's me walking outside right and yeah. i have to carry myself as such but i'm very much a woman and i very much you know have these feelings and want to be looked at as you know someone that has that feminine power yeah that energy yeah so. and i think some to your point sometimes we do things in life that you know you know latia just said it too like their backs are tired for all the things women have to carry right and you've been doing it so gracefully for so long men sometimes don't even appreciate it but also too i think we are in a era of confusion when it comes to who we are as individuals and you like that you want to bust that gun i'm sorry latia said bust the gun auntie that's, it. That's twice. We ain't going to do it no more. But the point of the story is true. We are in an era that confuses us to the point as we don't sometimes know how to show up or what people really want from us. I mean, clearly, you know, to show up how you authentically want to be received. We should know that. And at a certain age, I think you do. But we were talking about twerking in, in last episode at, at the brunch. OK, for people who like twerking, there should be a place for you to go eat lunch, have ass in your face with a hookah by your eggs. OK, if that's how you like to wake up and eat your, you know what I'm talking about? So be it. Ain't nobody going to judge, but I don't, I don't want to do that. And I know that I'm not going to X, Y and Z because that's where that exists. But I'm saying for us as a community now, it's confusing. It is so confusing. I mean, when you look at the videos, when you we talked about Puff Daddy last episode, and he, he acting bad at 50, then Misa done came out over the weekend and, and lit his ass up. Rightfully so. I want to bust that gun again, but I told y'all I wouldn't do it. But the, the point I'm trying to make is like, but we're confused. What do, and, and today I was talking to my, my partner Nate Dog this morning, and he's going through it with his ex-wife. You know what I'm saying? And he's not siding with Puff, but he's siding with the fact that these women be doing some crazy shit because a woman's doing some crazy shit to him right now. So this is the perpetuation of these situations. I told Nate, I said, you're not Puff Daddy. You are not leading black culture in some areas and have the legacy he has and you will not stand there and take bullets for him. I can't let you do that. I can't, I mean, this is me and him on the phone. I mean, everybody knows our conversation now, but this type of friend I am. But I'm like, yo, you, you are a good human. You just, you know, it didn't work out and she's fucking going crazy. Absolutely. This episode of The Kenny Burns Show is brought to you by Mickey D. The realest conversations always happen in the Mickey D's booth. Oh, uh, baby, I want extra pickles. Yeah, that's right, extra pickles. And then give me a chocolate milkshake and add some vanilla and strawberry. All the best nights out in with the bite from Mickey D's. Jessica, I can't feel my face. Please, let's go by McDonald's. <laughs> A full car ordering in the Mickey D's drive through is just the right amount of chaos. Uh, excuse me, I said I wanted the quarter pound of cheese. You said filet of fish. I'm telling you right now what I want. A full car of what you want in the Mickey D's drive through is just the right amount of chaos. What you want, Kenny? I want uh, a Big Mac meal, 10 piece nuggets, and two milkshakes. Uh, he wants a big- And a filet of fish. Why would you want? Mickey D's is the affordable answer to taking the whole family to dinner. Everyone's got their own. Mickey D's moments. Go on and make more delicious memories today. TKBS Nation. With some of the best and most capable vehicles in the world, Ford knows strong means more than just physical. Ford is sharing the inspiring stories of those behind the wheel who are accomplishing their goals, pursuing their dreams, and creating the world they want to live in. Built Ford Proud highlights D. Bryant, a Ford driver who has shown strength in how she is breaking boundaries to create change in her field for those all around her. D. Bryant is a professional stunt driver featured in over 100 films, movies, and shows. She began riding motorcycles at the age of 11. 
Dee has done stunts in many commercials, but she always finds herself gravitating towards Ford vehicles as her personal ride went off screen. In fact, much of her stunt driving training took place in a Ford Mustang. Dee is one of few females and even fewer African-American female stunt drivers in the industry. She constantly battles against sexism, racism, and unfair representation as many productions try to get around hiring female drivers. As a part of her fight for equality, she co-founded the Association of Women Drivers, a stunt driving school where she helps teach other women to stunt drive. She is just one of many examples that show us that Ford drivers span all walks of life, each with an individual story that shows how they are built Ford Proud. Learn more about D. Bryant's story at Ford.com slash Built Ford Proud. Breaking the mold, strengthening communities, creating change. Real stories brought to you by Ford. Built Ford Proud. One in eight. That's how many people have worked at McDonald's and where some have continued their career. Where graduates of McDonald's Career Online High School program are now role models leading the next generation. Where aunties, uncles, cousins, and communities learn skills they can use in every aspect of life. Hi, welcome to McDonald's. One in eight have worked at McDonald's, and where you start stays with you. TKBS Nation, this podcast is brought to you by the good folks at American Express. With Amex, every day can feel like a vacation. And I swear I mean it when I say it. I went to Miami this weekend because I have two Aries that wanted to celebrate by some water. So we land, go to the Soul House, and guess what we checked in using? Yes, my Amex. That night, the Janet Jackson and Ludacris concert was in Hollywood, California. We drove out, so the car service and the drinks went on what? Yes, my Amex. Ladies and gentlemen, my Aries are spoiled rotten. They wanted a boat the next day. What did I pay for the boat with? My Amex. That evening, I wanted some Chinese food. Yes, I got what I wanted at Mr. Child's, and guess what I used to pay for dinner with? Yes, my American Express. The dream is real. When you're with Amex, you can make every day feel like the best day ever. American Express, don't live life without it. I just learned Discover credit cards do something pretty awesome. At the end of your first year, they automatically double all the cash back you've earned. That's right. Everything you earn doubled. All the cash back from eating at your favorite soup dumpling restaurant doubled all the cash back from that trip where you sort of learned to snowboard also doubled and the best part you don't have to do anything ridiculous to get it nope discover does it automatically seriously though see terms and check it out for yourself at discover.com slash match and another reason i wanted to have the masculinity versus femininity and how after this video is played i want you to expound on it because it's going in this direction right now tiff play that for the nation evangeline lily has this quote that's now gone viral why are we only applauding masculinity in women and villainizing it in men and why are we only applauding femininity in men and debasing it in women that evangeline lily um said those things right and i totally agree I totally agree. I said a couple episodes back about the Bud Light commercial where the dude is in the, in the tub watching the game. Jessica and I had a spirited conversation about that. I don't know many men who are going to sit in the tub and let's have a big screen TV in their bathroom and gonna drink a Bud Light and watch the game. But I feel the agenda is to make this man look feminine. I don't know. And, and, and Jessica was like, well, how does that make him look feminine sitting in the bathtub? I said, because men don't take baths like that. There's a reason normally, now mind you, I'm not saying all men, but I'm saying there's a reason normally you're taking a salt bath because you worked out hard. So, or you want to get some type of relaxation with your right, woman. Recover. No, with your woman. I mean, not, okay, salt bath is recovery. Sex is involved with the other scenario. And there's not too many more reasons outside of the big screen TV. If you have that, most of us don't and ain't and won't. So I don't know. I just, am I tripping? Nah, you're right. It's preposterous. Like, let's start with like even that scenery, right? Like, and 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 then the programming that ensues, right? So there is this thing for like self healing, and we did just speak to um, the balance, right? That that neither is singular, right? right. Like that women aren't only feminine energy, and men aren't only masculine Thanks. energy. However, there is a duty 
to either to be a majority of or present themselves as a majority of when engaging the other in that case right um because of the woke agenda we could take that's where we could create this in the 90s there was that a woke agenda or is that a gay agenda let me explain the woke agenda is has been conflated now it's no it, 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 the woke agenda really doesn't exist now tips it's back really, all the way arch when i said that she was <laughs> she was concerned for two seconds sorry it's not the woke agenda really doesn't exist now it's like it's whatever it's whatever uh influence we choose to push to say that we're breaking the system yeah and that's usually now a distraction for what's to come and or actually breaking you you feel what i'm saying um so back to the back to that whole question though right like there is and and the quote um we are flooding um masculinity in women we are uh debasing masculinity in men and i feel like it's because of the time we're living in the right. insecurity around economy the insecurity around technology where we've allowed ourselves to go as a nation um as a people various cultures have different uh, stakes and shares as far as you know uh, control and influence mm. of society um i think that as a result of that it is it is safer right because the number has always been so small of those that have versus those that have not those that are controlling those versus those that are being controlled it is they feel that it is safer to not have a, a base of of resistance not have confident not have you know uh the men that are thinking and very uh, objective about outcomes and and realities right and so what is the easiest way to do that to to erase the man and how do we erase the man we say trans women are the new thing and you'll get the win if you're the trans woman or you will say uh that we want to see uh fortune 500 or we want to see a woman president when when did it ever make sense or my question becomes what military state was ever led by a woman and what is america where it nothing besides a military state? right right now i got it um latia i'm gonna let you go because i saw you shaking your head like a bobblehead yeah so <laughs> getting back to, to that the clip that we just saw i do believe that um masculinity in women are being celebrated out loud um is being celebrated out loud but i can't lie she had a point about um the feminine side of men is definitely being perpetuated and celebrated out loud um I is, it, is it being celebrated is, it's being celebrated by a minority and I which think is who that, I think it's being celebrated by people who are pushing their sexuality for equality come on for see. example now we're seeing commercials where we're seeing same-sex people you know doing what they doing whatever they do yeah. even in a Budweiser commercial or in you know what I'm saying which I have no and problem with by the way but, right, so but if I, that's the only so, version you see of something, that's also biased it's a per, to me. It's go, being promoted. Yeah, but go right. ahead, Latia, but that's biased right. to I, me. I think, right, so I, I think it is definitely being promoted. Um, I think there is an agenda of, of being pushed for acceptance and equality. But in reality, the people that are heterosexual, we don't care about what you do in your bedroom. Facts. So I, I, I think there is a narrative that heterosexual people have some type of uh of like hate for people who want to sleep with the same we don't for the record yeah i don't hate nobody nobody on the show hates anybody at all do what you want just understand the consequence of what you do just don't force that on me and my children yes you know what i'm saying so i just think that there that there is an agenda of of, of normalcy that they're wanting to push a new norm yes. for something that society and the world and god has set up guard well specifically for us and i think that the system is being bucked you know i love the passion and i want to say this because to latia's point in her statement nobody judges nobody here it's just a clear agenda it is a clear agenda and the powers that be continue to do that to latia's point to make it normal for everybody but it's not normal when you force it down people's throats no pun intended i did not mean to go there i just had to clean that up with that joke um but the point i'm trying to make is it is one of the things we must talk about as a community because i just saw another clip and i sent it to tiffany 
you know, Tiffany's my resident uh, superhero um, in, the, in the colorful flag world. Why are you smiling, Tiffany? You are, I love you. So I always send things to her for perspective. If like, if I'm confused because it was this one particular thing. Do we have that clip, Tiff, with the uh, the teacher, the, the teacher that wore makeup? I want y'all to hear this, um, hear what this teacher had to say. Sometimes with school choice, it gets a little bit tricky, right? I had my first class had the first day I had 25 students. By day two, I had 19 because six parents switched out of the class because they saw me and they were like, there's no freaking way before I even got a word in. As a parent, I would want to know, like, do you not think that that is okay or they're right to withdraw when they see you? Because ultimately, you're probably an excellent educator. I appreciate that. Um, I, I have no doubt about that. But I think we, we get into muddy waters when we start trying to take that choice away from the parent. Do I think that it is okay for a parent to see me and go, not around my kid? No, I don't think that's okay. I feel like that's really crossing the line because you are, for lack of better words, discriminating against me openly. That's like seeing a black teacher and being like, there's no way. It is the same. But it's not the same. Um, and, I, and I think that when you have young, impressionable minds that are not aware of that, not conscious of what that is um you have to be thoughtful in the teaching of those kids you have to be thoughtful that they might come from a heterosexual relationship home um that does not look like this and it is very confusing i saw another clip the young boy was talking about his mom said he was a girl because he loved girls and it was super like interesting to me that a parent would even say that to a child, not even like he loves girls as if he's, you know, and this is a baby, y'all. This is not like a, you know, a, a teen, almost teen that is going through the sexual feelings and, you know, might be, this is a, like a kid that loves to be around girls. And so I don't know, I just think it gets so blurry and confusing when it comes to people wanting people to accept them but then thinking that their way is the righteous way to do it. But Shelly, you were gonna say something? We've hit on several points and the word that keeps resonating is agenda. Mm -hmm. And I think we need to look at when the popularity of pushing an agenda has come into the fold mm -hmm. of of this. I'm, you know, I'm looking at an article and I'm looking at articles that are dated back 2004. And I'm thinking back so when I, 2004 yeah. at, you know, 45 years old, I'm like, okay, outside of college, right. you know, just getting, you know, your, your, your footing at a good job or, you know, whatever it is that you're doing. And is this really when the narrative of man versus woman, um, uh, race against race, uh, sexuality against sexuality, is right. this when this was getting pushed because it was something new yeah. in a sense was this yeah. a new word so i it, the word just keeps happening i'm like okay when did this really start getting pushed into into the culture of right can i um i, I don't know the, the way to say this but as i was watching the clip what i saw was masculinity versus femininity at its peak because that's exactly what was playing in that video we Thanks. have a man who was a born masculine person Who's, who, who's struggling with his feminine side. So there's some sort of imbalance that's there. And so my question was, he said something that was, that was valid. Um, is it right for you to take your children out because uh, you know of what, where I'm dressing? Right. And I agree, parents should be able to do that. However, if he still was who he was, but he did not dress in a feminine way, but he's still gay, the parents will probably still leave the children in it. Nothing changed except the way that he paints himself on the outside. Absolutely. You know what but, I'm I, but I think that's so, the professional thing to do. If you are in that position, you have to be professional about your presentation. Now, you can be gay and not wear makeup. That doesn't define you. That's where the clown shit starts for me. You hear what I'm saying to you? That's where the clown behavior starts. You feel because you want to wear makeup to teach children solidifies the fact that you're gay or no you're making people uncomfortable as a professional you are making people uncomfortable in this particular situation we're talking about this clip we just played so why can't you just be gay and come to work dressed appropriately for work you know we had the other thing that went uh viral with the transgender woman with boobs 
walking into school like it was okay. Now, mind you, it's okay for you to have those boobies. It's okay, but you can't do that in front of these kids that don't understand. And let now, now mind you, and, I, and I'm gonna go and say this: there's some transgenders that look like women and pass as women. And show up as women. And if you weren't asked, you would never know that they're, you know, born a man. But this transgender woman, he didn't even, you know, he just wanted to, I mean, <sighs> breathe. He's trying, right? He's no, trying. but because we, we want to understand and we want to be there for you and we want to support you. But the shock and awe of your delivery sometimes is bias. The shock and awe of your delivery sometimes is selfish. Because gay rights is not civil rights. We have to stop saying and that. And people like keep said, saying that. It's the same thing. If I'm black, it's not it's not, a, it's not the same thing. And we want but you to be comfortable. And we want you to dress the way yeah. you want to dress, but everything is not for everybody. That's gay and indifferent. That's gay, straight, whatever. You cannot keep doing that because the more you do that, the more you push the cause backwards. We are open to receive. You're human beings. You deserve everything you think in your mind that you should have as right, as far as rights. But to her point, civil right, you can't compare that to people dying, especially you black and brown gay people. They died so you could vote, so you could live in non-marginalized, in, in, in segregated communities, in systematic injustices. Those things are far different from what you're talking about. And when we think about, to, to Shelly's point, the agenda, there is an agenda. There is. Just like you see all these, these, these commercials with a black husband or black wife and a white husband or wife. There are agendas. And this is why you have the DeSantis's, the Trumps, and all of these Marjorie Taylor Greens. Because they feel like their race is gonna be extinct. Well, I got news for you. If you are raping and pillaging through the history of the world, if you are the most evil, treacherous aliens, let's just say it, because I'm not talking about humans that deserve love and compassion and are on the right side of history. But if you kill to gain, I'm gonna let that rest right there. If you kill to gain, if you don't care about life to gain, I don't know if you should be here. That's anybody. Three words come up for me here, and that's respect, foundation, and confusion. I'm going to say this because of that. The first thing I did is I'm young and I, like, yeah, I got a ton of information, but I'm also a comedian. So I was like, let's chase this down, right? <laughs> hey, you, ha, 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 ha. Very funny, motherfucker. <laughs> Right. So like if we chase it down, right? Unless like you your first your first sentence was these impressionable minds. Mm -hmm. So you have a child being raised in a heterosexual home with an impressionable mind who goes to school and sees his what he identifies as a male mm -hmm. teacher wearing makeup and lashes and mascara and tight clothes or things that are different than his father at home or male figure that influences him yeah he now begins to believe that males are expressing themselves like this freely because he knows nothing about sexuality right. or courting or mating or whatnot right and so because he's been impressioned and or conditioned and or it's been normalized for him to see males regardless of knowledge of their gender gender identity or sexuality um, but in authoritative roles like teacher or principal or leader or in any way, yes, right? Yes, uh, yes. He now knows that leaders are respected by women because of the resources that they're able to offer. But now he also thinks that he can court and appeal to a woman while wearing lipstick and or makeup and or mascara. Mm. And so what happens is then you get what Latia spoke about is men not assuming the role of masculinity because they haven't been conditioned or taught what masculinity is in its standard core and foundation. Mm. And so now you have women who need to overcompensate for the man that is not present 
and thus they can't provide the space as a woman for the man to be a man because a man doesn't know what he is. Right. I hear you. And, and I want to say this to your point. You don't have to teach anyone masculinity or femininity. It is in your natural order. How you feel is how you act. Message. Hello? Hello? <laughs> we act like there's right. a course for this. We act like that there's some type of reason you should be or shouldn't be. It is your natural order. I cannot tell Saucy Santana, like, I can't tell him that he don't walk like that or talk like that. That's that man, that's the way that man feel. You not finna arch your back and toot your booty up like that unless you can. And I'm not being funny, I know it's funny, but it's the truth. That's the way that man feel. And he has a beard, so he's not saying he's transgender. He's saying he's a man that's gay. As far as my understanding, but my thing is like, and I'm saying that to your point though, Haas, because I feel like a lot of times people get it mixed up when heterosexual people come to the table and they're offended or confused. No, if you were naturally acting like this, because again, I, I say Saucy Santana because I believe him. He likes nails, he likes a beard, he likes eyelashes, he, you know, he, he walks like, like a woman, that's him. I can't even, you know what I mean? There's nothing to say about it. But when you come into a classroom like this man just did, who is not saying, if I'm not mistaken, he wasn't saying he's transgender. He just wanted to wear makeup to class. He could be gay and not wear makeup to class in a professional setting where you supposed to show up as a teacher, not a gay teacher or a heterosexual teacher, but as a teacher. And this is where we get into these conversations, y'all. And we, you know, we have to say how we feel about it because I think if we say how we feel about it, the real compassionate gays will transcend into doing the things that they know they should be doing as it adheres to these topics because they feel offended when we come at them with like, you, this, that, and the third, you shouldn't be doing. No, no, no. We're saying this is a professional setting. This is how we'd like you to show up in the professional setting. Like anybody else is asked to show up in a professional setting. Have you ever met a teacher? Have you ever met anyone in corporate America? And I'm not, I'm talking about outside of Facebook and Instagram that promotes, you know, dress how you want, take five days off. I don't know where that exists anymore. I don't think after the pandemic, people are gonna be doing that as much, but you get what I'm saying. Like we all have a professional code, straight, gay, and different, but I, I want to say I think, this. I think there's a responsibility with any choice that you make. Yeah. And being gay is a choice. So if you choose to do that, being black wasn't a choice is what I, we was born. Wait, 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 I don't know if you gay know gay was is a choice. I think some people are born well, with those Well, here, here's, those, those here's feelings, and those. I think it, that's up for debate. I personally feel like, well, this is, cause this is my choice. You choose to be this way. I don't think they choose. I think they, no. they're born into Yeah, I'm going to have to stand in my square with that. Okay, cool. Well, let's opinion, take this for the rest of the ones that are coming for you. That somebody, because think about it. Because, I mean, we're made to reproduce. Two of the same things cannot produce the same thing. The, the whole natural, as we want to talk about natural, it's natural for a, a man and a woman can reproduce. A man and a man can't do it. A woman and a woman can't do it. No, we're no both, fact. We're put on this earth to procreate and to do that. Not so fair. that's why I say, you know, to, to the choice, well, you feel, I, I feel like I want to do this, but I'm choosing not to do that. That's my choice. No, but I feel you. Feelings aren't always aligned. You know what I'm saying? But this is my, you know, personal whatever. Yeah. So that, that's my thing. So if you choose to do this, I think in, in whatever you decide to do, there, there comes a responsibility with it. You know what I'm saying? And I think, like you said, the responsibility of showing up the way that um, what you are, since you went what you are or what you choose to be, doesn't overshadow what you, what you bring to the table. Because that teacher could have been a very good, you know, an amazing teacher. And, you know, could could have taught the kids something to help change their life, to, you know, but because of their choosing to, um, I guess, not be responsible in a professional atmosphere, what what they do in their personal life is overshadowing their gifts and their ability to teach. Yeah. So I'm going to talk I mean, to some of my gay partners and, and ask them to come on and have the gay conversation. We need to have the gay conversation because I, I and, and, you know, I think it gets super weird when you say choose when they feel they were born that way. But it's totally how you feel. But I want to get some on here and I'm going to bring you guys back to have that conversation because I think it's important we do. But I, I want to say this, too. And, and this is having everything to do with masculinity versus femininity. Have you ever seen Underworld? 
Has anyone seen Underworld with Kate Beckinsale? Yeah. And she's fighting them motherfucking lichens, and she's a cold motherfucker. But in these masterful, you know what I'm saying, dream sequences of werewolves versus vampires, she look good as a motherfucker. Okay, it's feminine in the mall. She's kicking ass. And she not, she not, she not on, she just don't look like a man doing it. And I, I, I'm saying to the point of the, you know, uh, Evangeline Lilly's point, you know, you want to see a man in a woman? No, the woman can be very feminine and still kick your ass. Huh? You ever heard of Strike a Pose from Washington, D.C.? One of the most gangsters, gay motherfuckers you ever heard of in your life. And he was betting on you to try him because he was gay because he was going to beat your ass in a feminine nigga way. We're going to lose that word nigga on one of these episodes. But the point I'm trying to... Big shout out to Strike a Pose. He's back in jail. But the point I'm trying to make... Huh? Y'all up here acting like people just can't be themselves and be a bad motherfucker. Y'all acting like somebody got to be a certain way to be a cold motherfucker. Fawn Weaver. I don't even know how I got to strike a pose and Fawn Weaver in the same sentence. Cold motherfucker. Showing up how she want to be. Huh? Receive. But ladies and gentlemen, you don't have to be a certain way to, to be powerful or seen as, with respect or admiration. We, we get outside and want to just let society get all up in our head. And that's what's going on with the gay community right now. And I'm going to talk to the gay community. I want to have them on the platform and have a conversation. I'm not speaking for them. But when you look at these commercials, when you look at the agendas, and it is somebody's agenda, it's okay. We, we have an agenda here on the Kenny Burns Show to say everybody get the information and can decide for themselves. We're not judging nobody. We talking about, yes, evil motherfuckers. People that want to do harm to our communities. People that ain't doing the right shit. Sometimes the village got to get together to speak on the shit so the people can hear you. That's what we do here. We're not trying to say nobody can do nothing. You ain't shit. I mean, some of y'all ain't shit. I will bust that gun, but I'm chilling out on the gun. But at the same time, huh? Huh? Somebody's here for the bullshit. Huh? Not here, but there. You get what I'm saying. So I want to go around the table as we close out this amazing conversation on masculinity versus femininity and get our illustrious panel of superheroes to tell you how they feel as we're closing out. Uh, Shelly B, I want to start with you, my love. Listen, I just want people to be healthy Come in on. who they are Come on. and whose they are. Come on. I'm going to be healthy and I need for you to approach me healthy. Or just remember that my five foot nine, 200, and I will step on you. Yeah. Okay. All right. Just don't want nobody stepping on nobody. Won't, won't get your back rubbed. Okay. All right. Um, remember who you are. I love that child. Uh, Hasa Diddy. Because it's masculine and femininity, I'm going to say to the women, we accept you. We love you. And we embrace you. And to the men, or as a man, I'm going to say, we want respect. We want acceptance. We want peace. And to the men, I'm going to say man up. Man up. All right. I like that. I like that. Latia Ashley Burns, before you get out of here and go to Paris and shake your ass at the Eiffel Tower <laughs> with some beignets. Um, actually, we're going to Egypt. We're just meeting in Paris. Oh, you but getting... Okay. Hold on. Egyptian lover. The, um... Egyptian lover, baby. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say, but no, I just hope the listeners got a, um, a renewed perspective on the balance of femininity and masculinity and how everything is a balance. Whenever one part one part is imbalanced, another one has to overcompensate for it. So I think if we all um, do our parts in life, love, and relationships, mm. that balance will be equaled out, and then we can have unity and all come together in one. And yeah. life, love, and relationships. Yeah, yeah, I love it. Round of applause. Okay. Round of applause for my. My motherfucking people, y'all my people now, but I want to say this on my way out the door. Uh, get out your own fucking way, okay? Keep making up all this shit. You keep making hurdles for yourself, huh? Be who you are. And to my baby girl, Shelly B's words, remember who you are. And on that note, on the count of three, we're going to say it like some motherfucking true players. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to say the, and y'all say dream is real because see, we can't seem to get that intro right ever. But uh, we family. It don't matter. Ladies and gentlemen, on the count of three, one, two, three, the dream. Dream is, is real. real. You see? <laughs> 
see, see, Haas, he used to take the yellow bus, and then he started. I, was, I, he I got, definitely the, did. The though. aliens got him and put some you neuron know. trons. They abducted me right out, right out the, the roof. The, 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 the dream is real.